What effect does the strength of the intermolecular force have on the physical properties? Physical properties include things like boiling point, melting point, viscosity, and others. Let's take a look at the boiling point first. The relationship between boiling point and intermolecular forces is that the stronger the intermolecular force, the higher the boiling point. In the process of boiling, you're actually separating the molecules from each other. When a substance boils, the intermolecular forces between the molecules are broken and the molecules separate and become very far apart. Molecules that are in a liquid phase are attracted to each other by the intermolecular forces. Molecules in the gas phase are too far apart to have intermolecular forces. Let's look at the relationship between intermolecular forces and boiling point. Because boiling relies on the fact that we're separating molecules from each other, the relationship is going to be that the stronger the intermolecular force, the higher the boiling point. In order to boil a liquid, you have to destroy the intermolecular forces that are holding the liquid molecules together. The stronger these intermolecular forces are, the more energy is required to break them. The strength of the intermolecular forces has a similar effect on the other physical properties as well, such as melting point and viscosity. Let's take a look at the intermolecular forces present in H2S versus H2O. To see which molecule has the higher boiling point, we have to compare the intermolecular forces. The molecule with the strongest intermolecular forces will have the highest boiling point. Let's start by comparing the London forces for H2S and H2O. Because H2S is a bigger molecule, it will have a stronger London force. When comparing dipole-dipole forces, H2O has an unfair advantage. H2O can hydrogen bond, which is a special case of dipole-dipole forces. Even though hydrogen sulfide has a dipole-dipole force, the fact that water can hydrogen bond means that water is going to have the stronger force. Neither of the molecules are capable of ion dipole forces because neither molecule is an ion. So then the question becomes which one of these molecules will have the higher boiling point based on the strength of the intermolecular forces? This table shows relative strengths of the intermolecular forces. You can see that ion ion forces, which are basically ionic bonds, are very, very strong. The next strongest is going to be the hydrogen bonds at 20 kilojoules per mole, followed by ion dipole. And the weakest of all of these is actually going to be the dipole-dipole force and the London force. So in the case of water versus hydrogen sulfide, water can hydrogen bond, which we know is a very strong intermolecular force. Hydrogen sulfide has dipole-dipole and London forces, both of which are fairly weak. Based on the strengths of the intermolecular forces, we would expect water to have the higher boiling point. So we know that water boils at about 100 degrees Celsius. And hydrogen sulfide would be the lower boiling point. And we can look that up and see that that is actually going to be about negative 60 degrees Celsius. Let's look at another example. In this example, we'll compare methane, CH4, with silane, SiH4. Both of these molecules are tetrahedral. And as a result of that, none of these molecules are going to have any dipole-dipole forces. These molecules don't have the requirements for hydrogen bonding either. The only intermolecular force that's going to be present in these molecules is going to be the London force. We can compare the sizes of the molecules and the molar masses of the molecules to determine which one of these is going to have the stronger London force. In this case, silicon is the larger atom. And so silane is going to have a molar mass of about 32 grams per mole, more than double that of methane. So based on the fact that methane would have the weaker London force, we would presume that methane would have the lower boiling point. And in fact, if we look them up, we can see that methane is going to have a boiling point of about negative 161 degrees Celsius while silane will have 
a boiling point of about negative 112 degrees Celsius. Let's look at another example. In this example, let's look at potassium bromide versus CH3Br. In this case, we see that potassium bromide is an ionic compound, and that means that it contains a positive cation and a negative anion. And so as a result, it will have ion-ion forces, which we already established are going to be very, very strong. In the case of bromomethane, CH3Br, the primary forces there are going to be dipole-dipole forces. Bromomethane is a polar molecule, which means that it can exhibit dipole-dipole forces, but those forces are not nearly as strong as the ionic bond that's present in potassium bromide. So if, if we compare the literature melting and boiling points of these two compounds, you can see just how large an effect the ion-ion forces have on the melting and boiling point. You can see that potassium bromide melts at 734 degrees Celsius. It boils at 1400, over 1400 degrees Celsius, while CH3Br has a boiling point of only around 4 degrees. So this just shows the extreme effect that ion-ion forces have on physical properties. Alright, one last example. This one's going to be compound known as ethanol, that is the CH3CH2OH, and we're going to look at that one versus propanol, which is the CH3CH2CH2OH. And so these two compounds are going to be basically the same because they both have a similar structure. They're both hydrocarbons that have an OH on them, then that OH is going to be an alcohol group. The OH is going to allow them to hydrogen bond. And so that means that both of these compounds have the ability to hydrogen bond. So since the physical properties of these are going to be very similar, the only thing we can really do is compare the molecular weights. We know that they both hydrogen bond, so they're both likely to be liquids at room temperature because hydrogen bonding is fairly strong. And so if we compare the molecular weights, we can see that ethanol has a molecular weight of 46 grams per mole. Compared to propanol has a molecular weight of 60 grams per mole. So the effect that this has is going to be in the London forces. So in this case, the hydrogen bonding is going to be relatively equivalent between the two compounds. But one of the two compounds is going to have a higher London force, and that compound is propanol. So propanol is going to be is going to have a stronger London force due to its increased molecular weight versus ethanol, which will have a smaller London force. So if we look up the boiling points of these two compounds, you can see ethanol has a boiling point of 78 degrees Celsius, while propanol has a boiling point of 97 degrees. And again, just to re review this, the only reason why is because of the increased size of propanol. Propanol is a bigger molecule. It's going to have higher London forces. Again, both of these molecules contain an alcohol, an OH, and so both of these compounds can hydrogen bond, but the difference is in size. Okay, so to wrap this up then, to determine which compound amongst several would have the higher boiling or melting point, you have to compare the intermolecular forces that are present in those compounds. Next, you want to rank the intermolecular forces from strongest to weakest based on what intermolecular forces are present in the compounds. Next, you can rank the compounds in order of boiling point or melting point by considering that the stronger intermolecular force is going to be equal to a higher boiling point and a higher melting point.